day 13 of the battle and it's very close to the capital Kiev. Bucha and Irpin, two of the suburban centers are directly in the line of Russian fire. There are tank wars that are happening. There's artillery attack that's happening. We are told missiles and rockets are still being fired both in Bucha and in Irpin. People are desperate to get out. The army here in Ukraine, it's not only battling the Russian forces, it's also helping evacuate the elderly, pregnant women, children and those who are desperate to be out of the line of fire. India today's Geeta Mohan, Pavan Kumar and I with our top story. Mr. Bucha, 3 Berezna, 22 Roku. on Kiev's outskirts is facing the brunt of attacks. You can hear shelling in the backdrop and hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people are fleeing this battleground. They're fleeing the war zone. As Russia advances towards Kiev, the capital suburbs are feeling the heat of missiles. You can hear all the Russian action. It continues, maybe at a distance, but it is quite a scare. Uh, we have residents from Bucha. Bucha was left bruised and battered after a severe pounding by the Russian artillery. The broken bridge and broken lives. Now a desperate attempt being made to rescue senior citizens. Easier said than done. An effort is being made to rescue these people from this broken bridge. Now, this place in the Bucha district in Irpin is directly in the line of Russian fire and people are desperately trying to come out. The town began emptying as citizens fled to safer places. This is a very crucial bridge to reach, to enter Kiev. And this bridge has been blown up so that the Russian forces are stalled. While the Russians may have their bridge-laying tanks, but getting those tanks in position here or finding another easier access to Kiev will stall their advance. And this has given time to the Ukrainian forces. We have residents from Ucha leaving their homes either on foot or, or, or uh, uh, being taken in ambulances and emergency services that have been pressed into action only uh, for evacuation right now in Bucha district. Uh, it, uh, the, the whole night, uh, people over here uh, really had to go through a lot of Russian action. So it is continuing. There are many areas that are absolutely unsafe. We see a lot of uh, war techniques, a lot of tanks, a lot of uh, army, and a lot of uh, uh, foreign. Are they people. Ukraine? Are they Ukrainian or Russian? No, it's not Ukrainian people. It's not a Ukrainian. It's a, uh, Russian people. Ukrainian defense forces are doing their utmost to stall the Russian advance. The situation is extremely grim. The Russians seem to be advancing and that is why this area is being evacuated. If you notice, only military personnel here in this Irpin Bucha belt here in Ukraine. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Watch, be very careful, Pavan, very careful. These are anti-tank mines that are laid on the road here. So now you can make out how dangerous the situation is. Uh, my camera person, Pavan, was very close uh, to these anti-tank mines uh, that, that have been placed here. In some of, in some areas, you also have anti-personnel mines uh, that have been deployed. Now, we have been told that there are anti-personnel mines and anti-tank mines in this area. Even trains are being put to use to block the Russians from moving towards Kiev. Look at the desperate measures. There is a train track. Goods trains have been parked in the middle of the road. This is a track that crosses this. Now, right now, vehicles can pass through this, but should the Russian advance be close? And there are, there are red lines at every flag and red flags being put. The moment those red lines are breached, this track will be closed. And this track, incidentally, is also manned, which means where we are right now, these trains will be in the middle of the track. Attempt is to stall the advance of the Russian army towards the... 
fighting with their backs to the wall. Ukraine is appealing for help. Please close the sky. Close the sky. That's the message. That is exactly the message that Ukrainians, this young lad over here says, close the skies. Uh, we, we've heard this time and again that uh, NATO and the West are not announcing closing of the skies. And unless and until that happens, Putin this, this Rus an angry soldier there, this Russian action will continue. Uh, so uh, uh, the demand of Ukrainians over here is to close the skies. A no-fly zone uh, over Ukraine is just a must. But the Russian war machine outside Kiev is huge. For how long can the Ukrainians resist them is anybody's guess. With Gaurav Savan and Geeta Mohan in Bucha district, Bureau Report, India Today. The Russian forces are regrouping to target Kiev and this is the assessment of the Ukrainian army. Top generals of the Ukrainian army have said that it's not just the Russian motorized and mechanized forces, but also the special forces, Spetsnaz, the Wagner forces, the Chechen fighters, they're all infiltrating into Kiev to launch a multi-pronged offensive. The apprehension is there will be an assault from the outside. There will be heavy air power used and Su-34 fighter bombers are already being used. The apprehension is that there will also be an attack by the Russian special forces from the rear to target Kyiv's defenses. The heart of Ukraine, the citadel of Ukraine is gearing up for a mammoth assault. There's a huge Russian convoy slowly making its way to the city of Kyiv. And the Ukraine army has sounded its biggest warning yet to citizens. A top Ukrainian army general has said that Russia's combat-ready units are now regrouping on the outskirts of Kyiv for an assault like no other. Kyiv is bracing for it. Kyiv has been bracing for it. But now it's imminent. Now it's likely to happen any time is what we are being told as soon as this ceasefire um, lapses. Because this ceasefire is only perhaps the last chance for foreigners to leave this place, for non-combatants to leave this place. And that is why mm -hmm. Russia unilaterally has announced two ceasefires in 48 hours. The warning has got Ukrainians living in the capital rattled. The reality that this huge Russian convoy could very soon be seen rolling through the streets of Kyiv. We got a bad news from Irpin that around 30% of the city is still uh, under the control of Russian troops. And the bad news is that the uh, army of Kadyrov, uh, they are <laughs> just, just, just getting into, into the houses of people. They are taking their money, they are b behave themselves as the looters, as the crazy looters, because they are with the guns, people without heat, energy, without food. They are, it's, it's very hard for them. And the Hadirov army takes the last that they can take from these people. Russian troops are now focusing all their energy on capturing Kyiv. Their aggression doubled after this video from Ukraine President Zelensky confirming that he's indeed camping in the capital currently. Понеділок. Я залишаюсь тут, залишаюсь у Києві, на Банковій, не ховаючись і нікого не боюсь. Стільки, скільки потрібно, щоб перемогти у цій нашій вітчизняній війні. Russian troops, meanwhile, are bombarding cities bordering Kyiv. This is the situation in cities like Irpin, where civilians are fleeing in large numbers. And people can be seen struggling to cross a decimated and broken bridge. <laughs> Russia is moving closer and closer to Kyiv. But Ukrainians are vowing to fight back with all they've got. 
13 days that uh, were there since the beginning of war, we were able to regroup, we were able to prepare. Our forces are strong than ever. Our resistance groups are ready to fight. We are ready for a siege if it happens. And the only thing that we do really need right now is the protection from the air. The final assault will no doubt be a bloody and deadly one on the capital of Kiev as Russia will look to end the invasion by capturing the citadel. Ukraine, however, has made it clear they will ensure it's no walkover for Putin's army. Bureau Report, India Today. And during these 13 days, air power has extensively been used, but there has been an escalation in the employment of air power. From attack helicopters to Su-34 fighter bombers. Kiev has claimed that they've downed a number of Russian planes, including a Su-34 fighter bomber. They've also claimed that in the past three days, multiple attack helicopters, transport helicopters and fighter planes have been downed by the air defense system around Kiev, which is very much operational. Russia fiercely escalates airstrikes on Ukraine. It is using its fighter jets to hit key Ukrainian cities. In the last 72 hours, Putin has unleashed the fury of Russia's hellbirds on Kiev and Kharkiv. Ukraine claims to have shot down a Sukhoi Su-34 fighter bomber in Kharkiv on Monday. They have released images of the debris of a Russian plane, completely destroyed and demolished. Ukraine also claims it has shot down more than seven Russian war machines in the last three days, including jets and Mi-35 choppers. Ukrainian authorities have shared several images of pilots who they claim are Russians now in their custody. Russia is using its formidable air superiority to control Ukraine's skies. The most visible Russian aircraft in the Ukraine war is the Sukhoi Su-25, a tough Soviet-era bird that's taken on most attack duties. The Mi-24 is also being used by the Russian forces. They are sturdy, heavily armed and used to support ground troops. The third Russian aircraft seen in the skies over Ukraine is the Sukhoi Su-34. A supersonic medium-range fighter bomber used for tactical strikes. Su-34 have been in eastern and northern Ukraine. Another Russian attack helicopter on combat duty is the Kamau Ka-52. These images of one such helicopter made to force land went viral during the early days of the invasion. Several more are said to be flying sorties on the northern border. The images coming from Ukraine show Russia's plans are striking deeper inside Ukraine than earlier believed. These airstrikes could be the prelude to the real battle for Kiev. Bureau report. India today. Ukraine's President Zelensky insists he hasn't run away from Kiev, that he hasn't fled to Poland as is claimed by the Russian media. In fact, he put out a video today daring the Russians, giving out his address, saying this is where I am. 
catch me if you can target me if you can and this has enthused people not just in kiev but across ukraine to continue to fight the russian attack the president has addressed several world leaders asking them to do more to provide not just fighters but also air defense systems unmanned combat aerial vehicles anti tank guided missiles surface to air missiles for him to continue to be in a position to protect his city his people and his country He knows his Putin's target number 1. He knows his country can't match up to Russia's overwhelming military might, but Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky remains an image of valor, of defiance and fighting spirit, steadfastly refusing to turn his back on his bruised, battered and bleeding Ukraine. In an open dare to Putin's army, Zelensky released a video giving out his exact location, saying he stays right there in Kyiv and not in hiding. Showing the images from the lane outside his residence in this video message. Вечерний Київ. Понеділок вечір. Ви знаєте, ми звикли говорити понеділок день важкий. Every time the Russians claim that Zelensky has fled the country fearing for his life, Zelensky has released a new video shattering the Russian claims. And never mincing his words while slamming NATO for letting down Ukraine and the United States for rejecting a no-fly zone, even donning the combat fatigue helmet and joining the Ukrainian troops in the front line. President тут. Всі ми тут. Наші військові тут, громадяни суспільства тут, всі ми тут захищаємо нашу незалежність, нашу державу, так? Taking a cue from their brave president, thousands of Ukrainians have sent their families away to safety and stayed back to fight alongside President Zelensky. Supporting Zelensky in every step is the first lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska. A vocal advocate of social causes, Olena through social media has continued to inspire and continue to provide comfort to Ukrainians. The big question remains, how long the president and all his loyal men withstand the might of approaching Russian invasion army? Bureau report, India today. Now, in the wake of the relentless Russian pounding, whether it's through artillery or through rockets and missiles or air power Ukraine's president Zelensky has sought international assistance not just in terms of weapons but also in terms of international fighters he's asked for mercenaries he's asked for veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan war to join the forces those who are fighting to defend the country within there has been an annou- announcement of an additional salary there's a salary hike there's a bonus for as long as martial law continues in Ukraine. Got a train station got to the safe zone like right. Michael Furkall says he is a former US army engineer who was in Rome studying archaeology when he heard Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky's appeal for foreign fighters. Within days, Furkall was at the train station in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv boarding a train to Kyiv hoping to volunteer as a medic. I'm a little bit nervous, I'm going to be honest, but at the same time, like it's not about me, it's about the people that are suffering there. So, coming out when you see the images, you see the people that are here right now, you understand that it's you're not suffering this more about them. Ukraine has established an international legion for volunteers from abroad, and Zelensky has publicly urged foreigners to fight side by side with Ukrainians. Some of the foreign fighters say they are attracted by the cause. to halt what they view as an unprovoked attack in a once in a generation showdown between the forces of democracy and dictatorship even if it may have been a tough sell for their families back home they're not happy to say the least definitely not happy but the proud a man who identified himself only as jax was among a group of british fighters headed to kiev they were led by ben grant who had just completed a month-long stint as a security adviser in Iraq. 
Grant was unclear whether his men would be deployed independently or as part of a Ukrainian unit. We're going to wait, to be honest, and see uh, what the situation is as we get further in. Another man who said he was a former British soldier and Afghanistan veteran, who calls himself Kruger, warned that even those who have previously seen fighting might struggle in Ukraine's war zones. If you're out here as a war tourist, it's, that's, it's not the place for you. I think the realities of war, if you, if you head out to the front, is going to be uh, pretty overwhelming. Although it is unclear how many foreign fighters had arrived in Ukraine, President Zelensky said last week that more than 16,000 foreigners had volunteered. There are many foreign fighters who are now joining this fight for Ukraine. There are Georgians, there are people who are veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan war, retired soldiers uh, from Europe and the United States of America. There are contractors who are coming in numbers. There is also an Indian connection. Sai, a 21-year-old aerospace engineering student from Kharkiv. When some of his friends, some of his classmates joined the battle, he joined them too. He's now a part of the paramilitary forces protecting the capital, Kiev. He went to study aerospace and has now picked up a gun. 21-year-old Senikesh Ravichandran decided he could not be a bystander watching his adopted country being bombed. Kharkiv, where Ravichandran attends university, has been the worst hit by Russian artillery. As missile rained on the city, the Coimbatore youth decided he would not evacuate. Instead, he joined a paramilitary unit of volunteers. India Today happened to speak to Ravichandran while he was on guard duty in Kharkiv. Three days ago, you joined the Legion to fight for Ukraine. Yes, I am. What kind of training are you undergoing, Sai? Uh, basic ta tactical stuff, survival and basic medic things. As an Indian, what made you uh, fight here in Ukraine? I wanted to be in the army for a long time. Uh, then, situation, I came here, uh, gone to university. Now I have many friends here. Further, uh, I have many friends, local friends, families. And, yeah, that's why. Ravi Chandran has undergone some combat training at the Georgia National Legion camp in Kiev. Ukraine claims thousands of foreign nationals have answered a call to join an international legion to counter Russia. With Gaurav Savant, Bureau Report, India Today. India heaved a sigh of relief when Union Minister Hardeep Puri confirmed that close to 700 Indian students, medical students who were trapped in Sumi, are finally on their way out of the battle zone and they will be flown back to India soon. India had been making attempts and efforts for several days to get these 700 students out of Sumi. There was intense battle. In fact, Yesterday, these children had sat down in buses. The buses were about to move after Russia announced a unilateral ceasefire, but Ukraine didn't agree. An effort was made once again. Buses were on standby. The moment Russia and Ukraine both agreed, these students were quick. They hopped onto these 12 buses. The Indian embassy officials and Red Cross committee officials were there. And now these buses are on their way to Poltova and then ultimately they will be flown back to India. Take a look at this report. He went to study aerospace and has now picked up a gun. 21-year-old Senikesh Ravichandran decided he could not be a bystander watching his adopted country being bombed. Kharkiv, where Ravi Chandran attends university, has been the worst hit by Russian artillery. As missile rained on the city, the Coimbatore youth decided he would not evacuate. Instead, he joined a paramilitary unit of volunteers. 
India today happened to speak to Ravi Chandran while he was on guard duty in Kharki. Three days ago, you joined the Legion to fight for Ukraine. Yes, I am. <laughs> what kind of training are you undergoing, sir? Uh, basic ta tactical stuff, survival, and basic medic things. As an Indian, what made you? Uh, fight here in Ukraine. I wanted to be in the army for a long time. Uh, then situation, I came here, uh, gone to university. Now I have many friends here. Further, uh, I have many friends, local friends, families. And yeah, that's why. Ravi Chandran has undergone some combat training at the Georgia National Legion camp in Kiev. Ukraine claims thousands of foreign nationals have answered a call to join an international legion to counter Russia. With Gaurav Savant, Bureau Report, India Today. Hollywood superstar Leonardo DiCaprio of Titanic fame has Ukrainian roots through his grandmother has pledged $10 million to the Ukrainian government. The government here is also being promised a lot of help and assistance, including financial aid from several celebrities across the world. Our next report tells you more. It's not just Ukraine, but even Russia faces the squeeze. On the other side of a quick break, we will tell you how several luxury brands are packing up from not just Moscow, but from across Russia. The oligarchs too are now facing the heat. India heaved a sigh of relief when Union Minister Hardeep Puri confirmed that close to 700 Indian students, medical students who were trapped in Sumi, are finally on their way out of the battle zone and they will be flown back to India soon. India had been making attempts and efforts for several days to get these 700 students out of Sumi. There was intense battle. In fact, Yesterday, these children had sat down in buses. The buses were about to move after Russia announced a unilateral ceasefire, but Ukraine didn't agree. An effort was made once again. Buses were on standby. The moment Russia and Ukraine both agreed, these students were quick. They hopped onto these 12 buses. The Indian embassy officials and Red Cross committee officials were there. And now these buses are on their way to Poltova, and then ultimately they will be flown back to India. Take a look at this report. India's mega evacuation mission from Ukraine, Operation Ganga, enters the final stretch. Is it tenth day of war? 700 stranded medical students have been rescued from the war-torn Ukrainian city of Sumi. The Indian nationals have been taken out in buses to Poltava, another city less affected by the conflict. Sumi me is samay, hamare koi kal raat ko 700 bache the, par 694 exact. Or maine aaj subeh jab control room me baat ki, wo is samay abe aapke is interaction se pehle, maine they were already in buses and moving out of Sumi to a place called Poltova, jo safe hai. The Red Cross and Indian Embassy officials have accompanied the convoy. From Poltava, students are all set to board trains to Western Ukraine to finally fly out from one of the neighboring countries. Uh, there is around uh, 600 students uh, here in Sumi, uh, mm -hmm. only Indian students. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, are, we are just requesting government day by day that... Uh, Please evacuate us as soon as possible. They just told us that uh, to stay in your position and uh, don't travel right now because the traveling is very risky right now to Poland or Romanian border. Indian students in Sumi had been seeking help from the Indian government for the last two weeks. We need our government right now. The evacuation was made possible after Russia and Ukraine agreed to set up humanitarian corridors to rescue besieged citizens. The breakthrough came after Prime Minister Narendra Modi held discussions with both Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky and Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday. Zelensky 
має перемогти будь-які вигоди. І тоді ми побачимо, що українське небо безпечне. India has evacuated over 15,900 students from Ukraine through 76 flights out of neighboring countries. With Russia set to intensify attacks on Ukrainian cities, the Narendra Modi government has advised all remaining Indian nationals to exit the country. With Polomi Saha in Delhi and Gaurav Savant and Geeta Mohan in Kyiv, Ukraine, Bureau Report, India Today. In this globalized world, any small development in any one corner has the potential of impacting the entire world. When you talk about the Ukraine-Russia conflict in its 13th day, the impact is being felt not just here in Ukraine, not just in Russia, not just in Europe, but across the world. There is an economic meltdown and analysts fear it will only worsen in the days and weeks ahead. The impact will be felt if not for years, but for several months. Missiles, airstrikes, bombings, evacuation. This is the war you see. There is another war raging, the one you don't get to see. The Russian invasion of Ukraine has triggered a meltdown in global economy, the effects of which could last for months. The immediate impact is on crude oil. Brent prices have jumped from $95 on February 24th, when the war started, to $127 in just 13 days. And now US President Joe Biden is banning oil imports from Russia. We're banning all imports of Russian oil and gas and energy. That means Russian oil will no longer be acceptable at US ports and the American people will deal another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. US has imposed a ban. Russia says it will shut natural gas supplies to Europe. Moscow warns an escalation in the economic war could push crude prices $300 a barrel. European nations are worried that President Vladimir Putin might well use the gas weapon. The EU nations have the most to lose. While US imported only 8% of its oil supplies from Russia last year, Europe gets 40% of its requirements from Russia. The increase in the price of oil, gas and raw materials has and will have consequences on our purchasing power. The amount of the heating bill and the cost of certain products is likely to increase further. The crisis comes at a time when the global economy, coming out of a pandemic, was already bracing from rising inflation. All this has spooked the global markets. The S&P 500 started the week falling 3%, its sharpest decline since October. The Nasdaq Composite dropped 3.6%. It is now around 20% below its November highs. Back home, the Sensex on Monday dropped 2.7% or nearly 1,500 points to hit a seven-month low of 52,843. While it recovered a bit on Tuesday, the future is uncertain. Add to this the fall in rupees value. The currency breached the 77 mark against dollar this week. The rising oil prices and drop in rupees value are bound to impact India's budget numbers as well. The world is in for tough times ahead. Bureau Report, India Today. Russia too is feeling the squeeze. Several top luxury brands from across the world are shutting shop in Moscow and across Russia. The impact is also being felt by the Russian billionaires. Their yachts, their luxury homes, their palaces are all being seized almost across the world. The question remains, how long will President Putin sustain this campaign if he faces the heat within? All-out Russian attack bleeding Ukraine. As war intensifies, 
Russia feels the heat too. But away from the death, destruction and fire, Moscow is silently bleeding too. While Putin is not personally hit, punitive global sanctions and business boycotts have begun to bite. Russians no longer have access to global super luxury apparel brands like Louis Vuitton, Zara, Hermes, Chanel, who are dumping Russia in droves. Once the hub of super luxury brands, high streets of Kuznetsky Most and Stolishnikov Perulok are now empty. Nike, Puma, Adidas have all stopped operations across Russia. More and more Western companies are withdrawing from the Russian market. Today, there was an announcement that Nike, Zara, Massimo Dutti, and even Gucci and Versace would stop providing their Russian customers with their services. British car maker Bentley, American brands Ford and Coca-Cola are no longer operating in Russia. Global furniture brand IKEA, with chartered shop, saw a massive rush at its outlets in Moscow on the last day of operation, as Russians rushed to own whatever was available. With reigning sanctions from global entities, it's the Russians who are paying the cost of war in their own country. Putin's alleged cronies, the Russian super-rich are bleeding billions. After losing yachts and private jets and their assets getting frozen, crippling losses now stare the oligarchs in their face. Some of the most influential billionaires from Putin's inner circle have been hit the hardest as the world tightens curbs. India today has now gained access to the seized Lady M, the super yacht of Russian oligarch Alexei Mordashov. The super luxury yacht is now moved in Imperia. We are in the harbour and this behind me is the $65 million yacht of Alexei Mordashov one of the richest oligarchs of Russia. It's a 52 meters boat and uh, its name is Lady M in honor of his wife. This is one of the yachts that has been taken by European authorities following the sanctions imposed to Russian millionaires. The global boycott and curbs have reduced Moscow to virtually a global pariah. But can they make Putin change his mind? Bureau Report, India Today. Are all decisions on Ukraine being taken only by Russian President Vladimir Putin? Or does he have a loyal team of advisors who have the guts to say no and call a spade a spade? Now, there was a deep dive into the thinking of the Russian President Vladimir Putin and his advisors. India Today now brings you this report on President Putin and his core team of military commanders and top security officials. Vladimir Putin projects an image of a supreme leader, calling all the shots unaffected by opinions. A one-man army. But that might be far from true. Putin has a loyal and committed inner circle comprising security and military advisors. Here's a look at Putin's closest associates who rose through the ranks of Russia's security services. Nikolai Petrushev is the head of Russia's Security Council. He's one of the three loyalists who've been with Putin since the 1970s. Petrushev was the head of the Federal Security Service from 1999 to 2008. Sergei Lavrov has been Russia's foreign minister for the last 18 years and is Russia's senior most diplomat. He's been Moscow's voice on the global stage. Recently, Lavrov tried to defend Russia's invasion of Ukraine at the UN Human Rights Council, while most other members walked out. Vladimir Medinsky is Russia's former culture minister and is currently Putin's aide. He's acting as the primary negotiator in the ongoing Ukrainian war. Yuri Kovalchuk, a Russian oligarch, is Putin's close confidant. The oligarchs have often been accused of routing Putin's money to the West through investments in real estate and more. Alexander Botnikov succeeded Nikolai Patrushev as the director of Russia's all-powerful Federal Security Service. Botnikov was believed to be responsible for the number of detentions and restrictions imposed on civil society last year. Sergei Narishkin has been the director of Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service since 2016. 
Narushkin is believed to be Putin's close confidant all through his career. Anton Venu is Putin's chief of staff who's set to play an active role in decision making in the ongoing conflict. He's been sanctioned by the European Union, among many others. Sergei Shoigu is Russian defense minister since 2012. It's said he accompanies Putin on hunting and fishing trips to Siberia. In the past, he was seen as a potential successor to, to Putin. Valery Gerasimov is the chief of staff of the Russian armed forces since 2012. He's played a major role in Putin's military campaigns and was spotted overseeing military drills in Belarus recently. Some say Gerasimov, who's viewed as an experienced military strategist, could have fallen out of favor after a slow start to the Ukraine invasion. These are Russian President Vladimir Putin's most trusted people. But how much does the Russian president actually listen to them? That's another question no one has answers to. Bureau Report. India Today. India Today has the biggest team of reporters here on Ground Zero from Kiev to Kharkiv, from Irpin to Bucha. And we will continue to get you reports from Ground Zero. But that is all I have time for on this special broadcast that comes to you from the Ukrainian capital, Kiev. That is all camera person Pawan Kumar and I have for you on this special broadcast. Many thanks for watching. For all the latest news and updates, stay with India Today.